Welcome to Midnight Mule FPL. I'm Midnight Mule and this is the video of the 5% series where if you follow these instructions you'll hopefully finish 5% globally which means you'll do very well in your mini leagues if there's maybe 20 or fewer people playing. So let's see what happened in game week 36 and then what the instructions are for game week 37. In goal you would have had one of these six playing hopefully. De Gea who got six, Raya seven, Ramsdale two, Pope 10, Kepa didn't play, Meslier didn't play. So that would have been an average of 6.3. Although I am aware of at least one manager following this who had both Kepa and Meslier. So that was a little bit unfortunate. Defenders, you would have had two or three of these. I'm scoring this as if your formation is 4-4-2. So I'm assuming two of these for the sake of scoring. Trent who got 13. Van Dyke 6, Trippier 11, Chilwell didn't play, you should have sold him last week, but I've left him in here for now. Shaw 8, Gabriel 1, Zinchenko didn't play. So that was an average of 15.6 for those two. The cheaper defenders were me for 11, Estupinan 17, Aguard 1, Botman 3, Pinnock 7, Castagno 1, Fafana didn't play, Canate 5. So that was an average of 12.9. In midfield, I'm assuming you played two of these. Salah for 12, Fernandez 6, Saka 2, Madison 2, Grealish 1, Gakpo 3, Rashford didn't play, Odegaard 2. Rather disappointing 8 for those two. And for the cheaper midfielders, I'm assuming two of these. Martinelli 1 went off injured, Gibbs White 2, McAllister 3, Matoma 5, March didn't play, Jensen 6, Somerville didn't play. So the midfields in general weren't very good for us this week. That was an average of 6.8. I'm assuming one of these strikers you were playing. Haaland for 7, Kane for 7, Darwin didn't play, Jesus 2, Tony didn't play, Felix 1. That was an average of 4.3. Of the cheaper forwards we had Watkins for 4, Isaac for 7, Ings for 2, Wilson for 24. Well done if you got him. Johnson for 1 and Bremo for 9. So that was an average of 7.8, so that was a bit better. Hopefully you would have had one of these as captains, so we had their points again because captains are doubled. Isaac for 7, Wilson 24, Trippier 11. Two Brighton midfielders got 5 and 3, Haaland 7, Salah 12, Rashford didn't play. So I'm reckoning that's an average of 9.9 .9 for your captain. So overall globally, the global average was 65 for game week 36. Basic calculation, I've not checked if the team's legal, but the minimum you'd have got following this is 23. And often the minimum following this system is quite low. But don't worry, nobody got anywhere near that. The average was 71.6, and I've checked everyone and nobody got that low, so that's nice. The most you could have got was 146. And when I checked people's teams who I know are following this, or approximately following this, there was a mixed bag between a small green arrow and a small red arrow. Those people that were in the 5% mark are still within the 5% mark, so that's good. There's only one person I know following this who's outside the 5% mark, and that's because they messed up a couple of weeks and played the chips at the wrong time, etc. 666 subscribers! <laughs> Thank you very much! What a special number that might be for some. So, transfer talk. Game week 37. I'm going to have... Some players, four different colours. If they're green, it's a very good buy. Yellow, I think they're a good buy. Orange is okay to sell. And red is, I think you should sell them. Now, we're right near the end of the season. There are two game weeks left, including game week 37. If you're basically happy with your position and where you are in your league, I would say play conservatively and probably don't take any hits if you can get 11 playing players out that look all right. And most of our players are okay. If you... If you're chasing somebody and you're willing to gamble falling down, but you might go higher, then it's probably okay to take a hit, maybe even two hits. But just be aware, taking hits means it could backfire and could go horribly wrong. But of course, some people took a hit last week to bring in Wilson, and it was worth it by a long way. But you could have taken a hit and brought in somebody who wasn't worth it. Hope that made sense. But generally, if you just play conservatively and just follow this system, you should do all right. So the goalkeepers, we have Pope, De Gea, Ramsdale, Kepa, Rea, Meslier. Of those, De Gea and Kepa, in theory, 
have double game weeks in 37. I think De Gea is worth buying if you've got nothing else to do or it helps you with other transfers. And I think it's okay to sell Kepa because we don't know that he is playing. He may have two games and because he's playing Man City and Man United, he could get lots of save points. He could get 10 points or he may not play at all and end up getting nothing. So if you have Kepa and Meslier, it's probably worth getting into hair if you can fit it in. But as long as you don't have Kepa and Meslier, it may not be worth or probably isn't worth making a keeper change this week. There we go. Meslier is worth selling. It was OK to sell. Defenders, you'll have two or three of these. Trippier, Trent, Shaw, Van Dyke, Gabriel, Zinchenko, Stones and Chilwell. Should have sold Chilwell last week, but it's possible for whatever reason you didn't. Shaw has a double in 37, as does Stones, as does Chilwell, but Chilwell won't be playing. Of these, I would say it's worth getting in Shaw if you can. And again, if you're happy where you are in your position in the league, don't do this for a hit. Trent is still a good buy to get, although he's expensive, he does get a lot of points. Zinchenko's injured, get rid of him. Chilwell's injured, get rid of him. So I would say... If if you're slightly not happy with where you are and you have any players I'm showing you in red, I'd be tempted just to take the hit and get somebody else. But I wouldn't go silly. I wouldn't take a minus 8 or a minus 12. But a minus 4 hit would be perfectly all right. The cheaper defenders, Canate, Stupin and Botman, Fafano, me, Pinnick, Aguard, Castagne. Stupin and doubles in 37, as does Fafana. I would say a stupid end is still a good buy. I know a lot of teams do have him, but if you don't have him yet, you may want to get him in. Of the midfielders, the expensive midfielders, we have Salah, Fernandez, Grealish, Rashford, Saka, Gakpo, Odegaard and Madison. Fernandez, Grealish, they double in 37, as does Rashford. But Rashford's a funny one because he did have a bit of a leg injury, then he's probably right from that. But then he's got an illness now. We don't know if he's going to be playing at the weekend. We don't know if he's going to be playing midweek. So he may have two games, may have one game, may have no games. So Rashford's a bit dodgy. And at the time of making this video and probably the time you're watching this, we don't know what's going to happen. So I would say if you've got, if you're do, if you're happy with where you are and you can get 11 players out if Rashford doesn't play, I'd suggest you keep Rashford. If you need to make a push and Rashford is still injured at the time you're making your transfers, I could understand you wanting to move Rashford on. But it's a gamble if you move him on. Moving him on at the moment is more of a gamble than keeping him, but it may pay off. So of the Salah, if you can afford him, is worth getting, as is Fernandez. If you have neither of those and you can only afford one, then at the moment I'd say probably Fernandez is the one you want to get. Madison, it's okay to sell Madison, Leicester are just in a very bad way. Of the cheaper midfielders, we have March, Matoma, McAllister, Martinelli, Gibbs White, Jensen and Somerville. The three Brighton boys double this game week, but March is injured. If you've got him, sell him. But if you're happy with your position, don't take a minus four to move him on if you can get 11 decent players out. Matoma is still a very good buy, worth buying. McAllister's a good buy, it's right to bring him in. We don't know for sure how if he's going to get played, where he's going to get played, but he may end up getting a good score. I wouldn't take a minus four to get in McAllister though, unless you can't field 11 decent players without him. Martinelli's injured, so if you've got him, he's worth selling. Jensen and Somerville, if you need to free up some space, you won't get much money for them. They're okay to sell. Now, I am aware of this system. I need to try and sort it out next season. But for this season, some people are struggling with money. So if you want to get in another cheaper midfielder who we don't have in our system, you could go for Casemiro. He's an exceptionally good player, but he does get a lot of yellow cards. He's always got the risk of a red card, but he can also get quite a good score. He's not going to get a score like Salah or Fernandez or maybe even Matoma, but for 4.9 million... He's OK if you've only got two United players at the moment and he frees up a bit of money to do something else you want to do or you need to do. Of the forwards, the expensive forwards, we have Haaland, Kane, Tony, Darwin, Jesus and Felix. Haaland doubles in 37, as does Felix. 
whether or not Jao Felix is going to play, if he's going to get any points, we don't know. Haaland is still a good buy. If you don't have him, he's worth getting. Kane is okay to sell if you want to free up some money and or free up a space. Tony's now banned till the beginning of next year, as in next calendar year. If you have Tony, he's a seller. Darwin's injured, he's a seller. So I don't suppose any of you still have Darwin. Some of you may have Tony. Tony's a nice one that can be sold. And you could get a cheaper striker if you want, if it frees up money for something else you want to do. Of the cheaper strikers, we have Watkins, Isaac, Ings, Wilson, Johnson and Buemo. I would say that Wilson is still a good buy. They're at home to Leicester this week. Now, we do have a lot of double game week players, so it may not be worth bringing him in if you don't have him at the moment. But he's got a reasonably good chance of getting some good points this weekend. Not another 24, but he could get a 7 or a 10-pointer. Watkins is okay to sell to free up some space, as is Ings, if you still have him. And now I'm going to throw in three cheaper strikers, cheapish strikers, which you may want to consider. That's Martial at 6.3, Alvarez at 6.1, and Enseco for 4.6. These three all have a double, but they're all a bit of a minute's risk. They all have several bad weeks in a row, but all of them could equally score in both games. So buying one of these is a bit of a risk. <laughs> it's a bit of a risk, but it should free up some money. So for example, if you had Kane or even Tony, you might want to sell one of those and get an Enseco if it then allowed you to get Salah and or Fernandes if you don't have them already. Regarding the bench, if we get the bench right, then the other 11 players will sort themselves out. So the first goalkeeper you see that you have goes on your bench. So if you have Meslier, he's on your bench. If you don't have him, but you have Raya, put Raya on your bench. If you have neither of those but Kepa, Kepa goes on your bench. The next choice would be Ramsdale, then Pope, which means if you have De Gea, you're playing De Gea. I'm now going to show you 16 more players that are in this system. The first one you see goes into position three on your bench. The second one you see that you've got goes in position two. The third one, position one. But obviously it has to be legal. You can't have three defenders on the bench. You can't have three forwards on the bench. If you have Chilwell, you shouldn't have him. But if you do, he's on your bench. Then Zinchenko, then Castagna, then Ings, then Somerville, Pinnock, me, Jensen, Johnson, Madison, Mbremo, Gibbs-White, Botman, Aguard, Canate, Watkins. If you still don't have three on your bench, then you want to be choosing single week players. And I would say choose your cheapest single week player who's away from home, put them on your bench. And if it's still not full, then your cheapest single week player who's playing at home. And if your bench still isn't full, then, goodness me, <laughs> then you're in quite a strong position. And I would say put the cheapest player on your bench, but hopefully you won't be in that position. But it means if you're in that position, it might not really matter who you put on your bench. Regarding captains, choose one of these as your captain and another one of these as your vice captain. That's my suggestion. If you've only got one of these, then choose your most expensive outfield player. That's midfielder or forward who's got a double game week as a vice captain. So I think Haaland is a very good choice to wear the old mule hat. But you may want to choose Fernandez, and that's perfectly fine as well. As is Rashford if you're keeping him and you're thinking he's playing. But if he's flagged, I would not put the captain's hat on him. The vice captain's hat's okay, but if he's not flagged, he's fine to have the captain's hat. And then the two Brighton midfielders, they're also okay. But I'd say Haaland and Fernandez are probably the best to choose one of those for your captain if you can. Hopefully that all made sense and you're all doing okay. We've only got two more weeks to go, one more week after this. And then hopefully we can look back and say, we did it. We're in the top 5% globally and we're happy with our league positions. Thank you very much for watching. Bye. <music>